I was recently thinking about the time Sophia and I ran sound for a, uh, like, paleontologist guy, uh, basically dinosaur guy. I don't know what, if they have their own names or they, something. They were in two separate rooms. I was in one room, he's in the other room, doing yeah. sound. So. Yeah, we were uh, doing this this thing for them, and um, he had in his presentation a recording of a supposed real T-Rex roar or some sort of actual dinosaur that supposedly still existed and roamed the lands of South America or something. And he said, I'm going to play it and it's going to scare some of you. So if you want to leave the room, leave the room now. No one leaves the room. He tells us to yeah, play it. Everybody in my room just had their heads down and everybody was like, oh, they're praying. <laughs> no, they're on their phones. We play it. And as soon as we played it, one kid just started shrieking, and then a whole barrage of kids just started screaming and screeching and running out of the room. And I don't know. <laughs> I mean, it was kind of creepy, but then again, it, it was okay, I guess. Yeah, it was it was more creepy in his room because it was like a, uh, the room had like a lot of bass. Yeah, I so bass like boosted that, that thing. It feels real. Anyway, all this to say that uh, Sophia and I are lazy right now, so we are recording in a room instead of our normal closet studio. So uh, if you hear any weird yeah, cause roars... Yeah, because a room is totally better than a closet. Yes, yeah. If uh, if you hear some uh, weird rumbling noises that happen to sound like a, you know, weird... They're, they're, they're not a T-Rex or a dinosaur. They're just like the plumbing and the piping because the wall I'm sitting next to you has the plumbing running through it. That is all. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Rocket to Anywhere, the show whose hosts haven't released an episode in so long that one is now a proficient stock trader. I'm Corban, the one who isn't a stock trader. Yep. Who, who is this yupper over here? Me. Who is me? Um. I am me, I am you. Um, Are you a shelter? No, I'm, I'm Sophia. There you go. Come on, 57 episodes in and you're still forgetting to say your name here. I don't know when. Anyway, on today's show, I will be constantly apologizing for missing a month of the podcast while Sophia blames me completely for it. Yes, because I'm over here. I'm literally always ready, okay? I'm always, always sitting I'm always I, sitting on this couch. I'm no, always I'm ready to record. I'm always ready to do nothing. So, um You calling this nothing? Yeah, I mean, I do nothing. So, um yeah, he's the one who's just like not doing it and I'm just like, well, the mics are right there, so hmm. Anyway, we do have to go buy IKEA. I'm, I need to buy a shelf for all the new equipment. Anyway, yeah, we will, however, catch you up on everything that's happened since the last episode, including Doctor Who Series 11, hilarious people we met at a conference, and of course, our usual jokes and thoughts. Including but a child first, being lost. Oh, no, no, we don't need to talk about that. Yeah, we here. don't. Okay. But first, we have a lot of follow-up. Uh, number one, I'm just going to blow through this as fast as possible. On episode 56, I was trying to remember the name of a book series that I read when I was like in fifth grade. It was called Ali Finkel's Rules for Girls. Number two, we and were And he ta- read all the books. Yes, I did. Yes. I'm not ashamed. He's I read it. Proud. Just, really just like, proud. Yeah, just like I read all the Wendy Mass books. Okay, you can't What's blame that? me for that. Okay. Number two piece of follow-up, uh, we were talking about our alternate universes and theories things, and then I was I mentioned, or I don't know if it got cut out or whatever, but I think I mentioned talking about what if Muffy's real name in like an alternate universe is Muffler. Turns out, I watched an episode of Arthur two days later, and Chip, her brother, calls her, hey Muffler. Hmm, got me thinking. Wait, did Ed Crosswire name his daughter after a Muffler? Hmm. Most likely. Most likely. I mean, that's the type of thing he would do. Number three, Luna or Luna Around the World, which is a show we uh, mentioned like a year or two ago, finally came out on PBS. And I I got the pre-release episodes. We were supposed to record it. But, you know, of course, no episodes over the past month. So uh, I never talked about it. I haven't watched it, but I've heard it because our little brother has been watching it. He, um, it. He was watching it and I was just listening to it. And they're like theme song has like nothing to do with it i don't know i mean it looks good the animation's all flash style like nine stories been doing for everything but eh, we'll figure it out we'll talk about it next week maybe if it's good next piece of follow-up 
uh, also for number episode 56, I take back everything I said on episode 56 about how the live stream from the moon wasn't even possible and how it was faked and all that. I, I take it all back. Thank you to the kind listener who anonymously sent me a link to an article, which I will leave in the show notes at rt.space slash 57, to a popular science article on how it was actually possible for NASA to broadcast from the moon for the Apollo missions. I, I mean, I, coming, I'm not just like saying, oh, this one article I believe. I'm, I work in live television, so I read it. I'm like, okay, this is all believable. Yeah, it makes sense. Wait, so it did happen or it didn't? It did happen. Yeah. I believe now. I'm a believer. Cool. I don't really care, so. Okay. So whatever. Second to last, um, we, some people have asked me, hey, do you have any follow-up on Will versus the Future of Skyward and a Kid Called Mayonnaise? Sadly, no. And um, I don't know why. Usually it takes them a year, um, if, if you haven't listened for that long. Uh, back on episode 36 of the podcast, I believe, we did a review of three Amazon original pilots that were released last year. And they were supposed to give us information about the production timeline stuff uh, by September last month. But I haven't gotten anything from them. And the only news that I do have is that Skyward did go into production, as far as I've heard. Will vs. the Future is waiting on extended funding, as far as I've heard. And A Kid Called Mayonnaise did not make it, from what I've heard. But I don't know how much any of that is true, if it went to another network or what. But I will be oh, wow. reaching out to Kim McKeon. Kim Kim McKean, Tim McKeon, the uh, creator and writer of Will vs. the Future, uh, and be seeing if he has any news for us. And last piece of follow-up, I know no one really cares about this, but uh, in the These Never Made It episode last month, or I guess our last episode, I did a reading of uh, Porcupine Necktie, which is the uh, short story um, and the front of the book Star Girl by Jerry Spinelli, and I know I missed like an entire page that accidentally got cut out. I don't know what happened to that, but apparently didn't record it, so it's missing. But that's it. So that's all for follow up this week. Let's move on to thoughts of the week. What do you have? Uh, how about what do you have? Okay, what I have is something that you probably won't understand, but some people will. So we forget our dreams. Like, okay, you ever wake up in the morning, you had a dream, and you're like, wow, that was a great dream. Wait, what was it? You forgot what it is. Um, that only happened once to me because I like rarely ever. Oh wow, such a special person. Uh -huh. Anyway, we forget our dreams because they're stored in the RAM of our brains. You have to wait for it to like uncompress. Okay. Some people are going. Hmm. Other people are going. Huh. Okay. Now, what do you have? We're the last generation whose baby photos weren't taken on phones. Like, so everybody, uh, how old is Peace? Like, nine? Yep. Okay, so. She claims she's ten, but she's nine. No, she claims she's nine. Oh, yeah, yeah. So she's eight. Yeah. She, oh, yeah. See, we're falling in the trap here. Okay, so. So, if you're seven and under... No, eight, eight and up, eight and up, have babies not take, okay, you know what? Have, have photos, babies not take. Photos <laughs> not taken on phones. I really need to, like, get this right. All right. Yeah, because her baby pictures were taken on a fancy DSLR camera that got stolen, and we could never find back, thanks to the fact that uh, someone, Sophia Sophia, threw away our DART tickets, and we didn't know which DART train, DART is the uh, Dallas area rapid transit or train system in Dallas, no one knew what, what train we were on, and we left the train the, the camera on the train, and then we did, anyway, whole point is, camera, fancy, expensive, was left on train, that camera had the SD card for every single picture of peace on it. Yep. And it was not backed up anywhere, so we lost all the pictures. Cool. One bad thing about the fact that our pictures weren't taken digitally is that now it's a pain for me. To have to be going through all these physical pictures and scanning them into Google Photos or whatever service I have. Well, now on to learn a word. This week's word is bum fiddler. Bum fiddler. B U M F I D D L E R. And it means a nosy busybody. So, an example Stefano from a series of unfortunate events. The reptile room was a bum fiddler or acted like one until he was revealed to be dun 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 count olaf Ooh. he was a nosy busybody that is all 
Well, let's move on to our joke time, the segment that increasingly people seem to be skipping and not liking, but we still do it because we like it and huh, we make what we like. like. I don't know. Hmm, really? Because you would try to tell jokes. So please tell your first joke. I don't know if this is an actual job, but if it is, it's, that's it's a pretty good job. All right, so somebody somebody told somebody. Uh, somebody <laughs> wants. No, please don't. Somebody told somebody that their job was a penguin erector. So every time a plane flies over Edinburgh Zoo, the penguins can't take their eyes off of it. And um, so it goes around. uh, So since they can't take their eyes off of it and it passes like behind them. So they end up falling over and then he has to go around picking up 31 penguins (laughs) 2,000 times a day. (laughs) Sounds like sheep knocking over the sheep. Yeah, that would be a cool job, though. I have a joke here. I'm not bragging, but I made six figures this year. So they named me the year's worst employee at the toy factory. Six? I don't get it. Okay. You see, you went to a stocks conference. You should understand this, Sophia. He made six figures. Six figures. What's six figures? That's dun-dun-dun-dun-dun-dun-dun-dun or something. I don't even know if I did dun-dun six times. That is one million or more. So he... It's like I made six figures this year, so they named the so they named me the year's you know worst employee at the toy factory. So there's a kid in class, and he goes, "Hey, teacher, teacher," and then the teacher goes, "Yes," and then they say, "Would you punish me for something I didn't do?" And the teacher says, "Of course not," and then the kid says, "Well, I didn't do my homework." See, this is like those kids who write true false like that special yeah. way where it, yeah. it says what you want it to say yeah. so you can write it and you say true but it looks like false at the same time mm-hmm. both of those kids get kicked out of my class well guess what they get an a plus in mine and then they get a nothing in life i now have like last week and ex- last week <laughs> what am i talking about two months ago i now have a, another extremely long joke. Now, it's kind of like the plot of Bill and Ted 2, but it's still funny. So, there are two identical twin brothers that live together. One happens to be a well-respected dentist, and the other can't seem to keep a job. Instead of actively looking for work, he likes to sit around at home, like someone here. <laughs> yeah. One Saturday, the dentist is hungry and puts his brother on the spot. He tells him to get off his lazy behind and go get some food. After some protests, the lazy brother takes the car and leaves for the store. Wait, 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 wait. Go get some food for the dentist or go get some food for himself? For both of them. Okay, cool. So, after some protests, the lazy brother takes the car and leaves for the store. In the meantime, the dentist takes a nap on his day off. He turns off his phone so he won't be interrupted. About 30 minutes later, the lazy brother gets into a head-on collision in the intersection by the grocery store. His vital signs are fading. He's unconscious and barely moving. An ambulance picks him up and rushes him to the hospital. He ends up in the emergency room under observation, but his condition is critical. They try calling his dentist's brother, but he doesn't pick up because his phone is off. The dentist wakes up to a knock on the door. Suspecting a solicitor, he ignores it, but the knocking continues. Eventually, he resolves to get up and yell at the person at the door. When he does, he reveals the Grim Reaper. He is just as he appears in movies, a full skeleton underneath a tattered cloak. The Grim Reaper swears, Oh no, this always happens with identical twins. What do you mean? asks the dentist. Well, if you must know, your brother was in a critical car accident, and I've come to take him to the underworld. I'm afraid his time on Earth has ended. I'll take my leave now. The dentist is noticeably upset. He says, wait, isn't there some way I can challenge you for my brother's life? After all, you made the mistake. Certainly, there must be a way I can bargain for his life. The Grim Reaper asks, what do you have in mind? The dentist thinks, how about a challenge? If I beat you, you let my brother go free. The Grim Reaper laughs. I will beat you in any challenge. What challenge do you propose? The dentist smiles. I propose we see who has the cleanest teeth. Five minutes of brushing eth. Yeah, <laughs> you talk like that. Your teeth are clean. Oh, five minutes of brushing eth. 
<laughs> five minutes of brushing each, then we decide. Very well, says the Grim Reaper, who makes his way to the bathroom. Once there, he pulls back his tattered cloak to reveal his skull. It's glistening. He takes a toothbrush from the bathroom, loads it with toothpaste, and brushes. After five minutes, the shiniest teeth anyone has ever seen glisten and make the room bright. The Grim Reaper grins. Like that thing. Anyway, you are foolish, human. The Grim Reaper. <laughs> yeah, that's really okay. You are foolish, human, but you are entitled to your chance. The dentist takes another toothbrush, loads it with toothpaste, and starts brushing like a madman. When his five minutes are up, he spits out the paste, and he smiles. It's unbelievable. The shine from the dentist's teeth is so beautiful that he can see the Grim Reaper's reflection and his perfectly clean teeth. The winner is obvious. The Grim Reaper hangs his head in shame. You win, human, this time. Your brother will live. And he disappeared in a puff of smoke. At the same instant, the bedridden brother wakes up in the hospital. Not only is he uninjured, he seems perfectly healthy. Suddenly, the phone by his bed rings. It's his brother, the dentist. He picks up. Hey, bro, you'll never believe what happened. Apparently, I went out to the market and got hit by a car. They say I almost died. The dentist smiles on the phone and says, <laughs> Well, that's interesting, bro. Today, you might say that I also had a brush with death. Mm. Wow. Thank you. Oh, that's it up. Just for that. Okay, just for that. There I you mean, go. I could have just said, um, so there were two brothers. I had uncle twins. One of them got in a car crash and almost died. The other one had a little brush off with somebody and, and Grim Reaper or whatever. And then and they ended up grinning. And then, um, yeah, everybody was fine. And so they had a little brush off. Get it? Huh? Okay. Huh? That's funny. Okay, so let's 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 get over all this stuff and move Wait, on. Wait, okay, to... but what I don't understand is the fact that um, it's a dentist, and had five minutes to brush their teeth. Like, okay, you literally before you go to the dentist, you brush your teeth for five minutes, and they don't look any better. Because you didn't brush your teeth any time before that. And neither do the dentists. I mean, okay, dentists who who yeah, operate. Yeah, that's what I want to ask. Why do they wear a mask over their face when they're cleaning our teeth? They don't want us to see that they're the hypocrites here. Mm. No, 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 no. The the guy who who took out five of your teeth. Um, five? No. Yeah. You only really took out two. Uh, well, why do you have five holes? <laughs> that's another story for another time. No, okay. still well, five anyway, holes in my face. Two. Yeah, your your two teeth. The guy who operated you, he had like the yellowest teeth ever. You know these these hypocrites these days. They're getting exactly. really bad. You never know, you know. These people shouldn't be your... You never know, you know. Yeah. <laughs> these people should not be your dentists. Mm-hmm. Yelling stay at a non-living object that keeps falling over as if it's going to listen to you. You know? Mm-hmm. Like, because you do this all the time. You literally... You get so mad, you're just like, stay! And then it falls That's, off. Yeah, that was me way. with your microphone stand setting up today. I'm like, come on, stay. Stay. Don't be leaning over. Stay. Mm-hmm. Is it leaning right now? Oh. Huh? Yeah, it's kind of leaning. Okay, now it's time for topic time. And what's a better topic for this great comeback episode other than where have we been, a.k.a. here's some excuses of why we've been gone so long. <laughs> excuses he came up with. So uh, let's do the first thing. The first thing that caused us to miss our first episode many, many months ago. So we had gone to a stock trading conference that spanned over a weekend. And it was, interestingly, boring. It was not. Well, okay. The first day, the first 10 hours were not. The first day. <laughs> the first 10 hours. Yeah, the first 10 hours weren't boring because, like, I actually learned. Now, the second 10 hours, it was like a repeating of the first 10 hours just in the morning instead of at night because the first 10 hours was at night and the second 10 hours was in the morning. So, yeah. Oh, oh, and then I tricked Corvon. Well, we'll get to he that bought, later when we get to the list. Okay. So, on the first day of the, uh, on the, conference uh there was no reserved seating or anything it's you know you pick your table and where you're gonna sit when you get there and us we were late because of rain and stuff which we'll get to the rain in like a later segment today um and we had to get there late so of course always the last seats available are the ones at the front so we had to sit at the second to the front table and because we we're here the presenters of course always look at us for a confirmation that they're doing doing something <laughs> they just want answers on stuff <laughs> mm-hmm. and so the other people who sit at the front are not only the lay people 
The people who sit at the front front are people who have done this many times before and have a lot of experience with this company that was running on this event. And the people had to be sitting, the people who happened to be sitting in front of us at the front row were some of the best stock traders in the country, you could say. We're not allowed to disclose their names, apparently, but they were there. And one of them, there, there was this old lady there. And I Sabrina, wouldn't say old. <laughs> well, I don't, I don't know how to describe this, but she was quite a character throughout our weekend there. Yep. So we have a lot... A lot of, of things that we wrote down because we were so bored at this conference on this piece of paper here. Mm-hmm. And we are going to go through a lot of the things that happened in this, at this conference that just were hilarious. So, I have some dialogue here. The man who was sitting next to us was named James. He just asked to the person next to him, he can have a pencil. Just whispering very nicely. The lady in front of us turns around very loud. Please stop talking, James. <laughs> and he's know. like, and it's like they knew each other. It's like, you too. <laughs> and what ensues after this was the verbal equivalent of two minions just fighting. You know, where they just put the hands out and they go, oh. okay. Okay. <laughs> Moving on. Uh, when the in- instructor named Boyce in- 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 introduced himself, he called himself, the people in front of us started calling him, no, your name's not Boyce. Your name's Boyish. Boy- Boyish. Okay, you know, these things seemed a lot funnier when I wrote them down, but now they're just not, not funny at all. But uh, anyway, speaking of the man who's sitting next to us, anytime uh, the instructor would say the name of any like famous person or actor, he would be like, oh, they're dead. Oh, yeah, he's dead too. Yeah, I know. Oh, it's oh so they're dead. Funny. <laughs> and uh, the other presenter would come up. Sophia, would you like to take as part of all the things she kept oh. saying? Oh, 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 okay. If you ever... Meet me. If you ever see me, if you ever talk to me, don't ever say jazz. Don't say all that jazz. Don't say, uh, don't say okay in a Boston accent. Okay. Don't say, don't say, okay. Don't say, don't say, um, what was the other one she said? Chichipated. Yes, don't ever say that. Yeah. Hmm. She's always like, instead of saying crazy or. Look at these lines. Or. Or extravagant or amazing. Instead of saying that, she's like, it was all chichipated, chichipated, everything's chichipated. No, it's not. Look at this candlestick graph. Look at look at the graph. Look how chichipated it gets right there on the December 19th mark. Just look at that. That would be a great time to invest right there. Okay. Yeah, and all that jazz. <laughs> and all that jazz. And yes. she does her hand movement. Oh. Yeah. I mean, oh, she, she, was, she was good, but just don't say she would She called, uh, the, that instructor said that also called uh, California, the land of fruit and nuts. And more nuts, meaning nutty investors. Uh, she also said that's where everyone um, who's a bank robber lives. Because oh, yeah. apparently, like, she's like, anyone in here uh, ever robbed a bank or knows someone who robbed a bank? Half the room raises their hand. I'm like, huh? Huh? Yeah. What? I, guess, I mean, <laughs> I guess. Are, y'all are stock traders. What happened? What? What, what happened? I guess you really came on some tough times. That Apple stock wasn't going where you wanted it to go. Yeah, no, no, no. She was like, she was like, when they did the conference in in California, everybody in the room raised their hand. Yeah. Because she said, "Do you know anybody who know? Do you know someone who's robbed a bank or have you robbed a bank?" Everybody raised their hand because they were all like, "They." What was that story that one of the guys told her about his grandma robbed a bank? Yeah, but because and then she just wanted to feel the adrenaline rush of it. She was bored when she just robbed a bank, yeah, but she got was. caught because the granddaughter or grandson took a wrong turn. At yeah. the light, yeah, and they drove straight into the police station. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, anyway, um, the lady in front of us also had some weird comments. Um, she said, "This one knocked us out of our chairs. We had to we, leave okay, the conference room." Okay, we were sitting room. there. We were sitting there, <laughs> and we were just like sitting there with our hands in our faces, just like laughing. And very softly, okay. And because and so, we're at the front, the instructor is seeing us this whole time. Yeah, and she was talking about what was she talking about? She was talking about something serious. Yeah. And we're just over there laughing. And I was like, like, I'm getting up. Yeah, she's talking so like, you need, to, you need to be with out. the fundamentals, the technicals, and the market tone. Like, if you don't get this right, she's talking about all the bad things that can happen to you if you make a misinformed trade. And we're just laughing and laughing. The thing is, with Sophia, when I, when she starts laughing, I start laughing, which makes her laugh more. And then it's back and forth, and we just can't stop laughing. Yeah. And yeah. so I'm like, I will leave the room so that 
that we can calm down. Yeah, but I had to leave the room, so I just, we just like both So we just up. both like shook the table and stood up and walked out like in a rush and a hush. And everyone, you know, we're at the front, so everyone's looking at us. And we're walking out, and we're like, <laughs> and we had to sit yeah, outside for like crying. 10 minutes. It actually it looked like I was throwing up. That's what it yeah, looked like. I was like crying and red in the face, and she's just all crazy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, another thing that Ru said. <laughs> said um she's like don't i don't know this was a completely out of context she just mumbles this out loud don't mess with me while i walk because you might see jesus real soon <laughs> this is what set us walking out of that classroom just... no, and then, what was next what was next was um she goes she goes my, my uh something about something about yeah, because I'm going to go to the gym or something. And I oh, was like, what? yeah, yeah. They're like, uh, yeah, that was that's actually what sent us walking out. Yeah, that's what it was, because they're like, so they, they're at the end, of, you know, coming up on a break. And she's like, so if you start investing and she just showed us all the figures and the amount of money we could possibly in quotes make. She's like, with all this extra money and stuff, you could quit your job. Like, where would you be? If you weren't at work, I know, like, and like everybody was like on vacation or like in Hawaii or like whatever, whatever. She was like in the gym, <laughs> the gym. <laughs> oh, I don't know. I don't. I don't want to be. Like, I'm judging you for going to the gym, but you just are not the type of person I would see at the gym. <laughs> you wouldn't go to the gym. I don't think you could make it. <laughs> you wouldn't yeah. make it there. I mean, I don't want to go with you either because you know I might see Jesus real soon. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay, so that, that's enough from us on that. We're we're done with that, at least for now. Yeah. So let's carry on. Where else have we been? The th- week after that, holler, as the kids these days say. Holla! We got a movie deal here. We get to, oh, we yeah. we're gonna be writing a movie. Like, oh yeah. Yeah, Corban, you better start reading it. Yeah, better. Yeah, that's one of the things. You should read. You should the thing read is, book. he has to read it because he's gonna read it aloud to me because I don't read. So like. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you're just illiterate. Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, after that, I'm teaching a movie filmmaking screenwriting class. Woo, hooray. Uh, also, more excitingly, get to resume my role as producer for the next season of the TV show that I work on, which I don't publicize because people will criticize me for it. Woo, yeah. Mm-hmm. Wait, 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 wait. Is her one off? Yeah. See, I, I'm so vague about it. She doesn't even remember which one it is. No, but I thought you were st- already a producer for it. I mean, I am, but I, I'm not. This is uh, currently off- doing. It. Well, yes. Well, we can talk about this off air. Yes. Okay, I got that. I got the week that. after that, we couldn't record because I was in the middle of equipment upgrades, and we didn't have the equipment needed to record. So there's nothing there. Then the week after that, rain. So much rain. Extensive amounts of rain that I have never seen in this city of Dallas. There is a little creek down the street from us. It was overflowing into the street. Yeah, it, it was wasn't crazy. a creek no more. It was like a river. It was the Jordan River. <laughs> yeah. Expect the Ark and the Covenant to start walking by and say, This here Ark. You slapped it. Okay. That's that's it. That's me. If you, if you, okay. Carrying on. And oh, the last thing. Oh, I get it now. Last week, no episode, because uh, I was the lighting designer for the band for all seasons, so, woo. And thanks a lot to the drummer for not getting me the set list. No, yeah, mumbles. thanks a lot to you for not hyping up anybody with those lights, because you didn't do anything crazy. Strobes are crazy enough. No, they're not. It's like, woo. Yeah. Uh, woo. Like, wow. where's the, where's the, poop, someone had a seizure, poop, 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 poop. but whoa. Yeah, who can have a seizure doing that? A lot of people oh, will. Yeah. They're going to come after you. Well, it's that time of the podcast again. Whatever. It's that time of year when I get a fever everywhere. Yeah, it's that time of year where Sophie Hill gets some sort of sickness. No, fevers. Fevers. Fever. I'm actually fine. <laughs> I'm, I'm actually honest, fine. I'm it's fine. just a fever. <laughs> Okay, so what are our recommendations of the week? Eat some chocolate chip waffles. I know. You really wanted those this morning, didn't you? Yep. I ran out of eggs. Couldn't make chocolate chip waffles this morning. Well, now we have four cartons. I know. They were on sale. 37 cents for a carton of eggs. Mm -hmm. Who knew things could get this cheap with communism? Well, it's Texas, (laughs) so like cheapness is our thing. (laughs) Texas, cheapness is our thing. Yeah. 
put that on the billboards outside HEB. Cheapness is our thing. <laughs> Not everyday low price savings. No. <laughs> Cheapness. Okay, my recommendation is a YouTube channel I recently stumbled across, which I do not know the name off the top of my head, but it will be in the show notes. His definition of stumbling is, well, I sort of stalked someone for like three hours, and then I ended up on this account, and then I was like, hey, cool, they resemble the person I'm stalking, so let's do it. (laughs) There's no face on this account. Exactly, it's the point. (laughs) (laughs) It's a YouTube channel where they post popular songs, and then they completely just... They strip the the vocals out of the song, then with auto tune they mess them up to sound them just completely off key. And I found "All I Want for Christmas" by Mariah Carey just completely off key, and it is amazing. All I want for Christmas, yeah, you. <laughs> it's it sounds it's like me time. trying to sing, mm-hmm. or some people that me and I work with on a weekly basis as audio engineers uh-huh. trying to sing. Oh man, and just at two fifty four around there when she starts going, da 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 da. I mean that I just lost it there, and especially those ending high notes. Wow, you have to hear this. It'll be in the show notes at rta dot space slash fifty seven. Speaking of which, thank you for listening this week. If this was your first time, please subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Google Play Podcasts, Spotify, and anywhere else podcasts are available. Links for all locations are available at rta dot space slash listen. If you have any suggestions for the show, you want to send us some jokes, you want us to talk about something from you, or you have any more things to ridicule me about, or not ridicule, thank you, any articles you want to send me to change our minds about being flat earthers or something, (laughs) we're not, Uh, email us rocket2anywhereshow at gmail.com, or you can tweet at us at RTA show on Twitter, or at rocket2anywhere, direct message us on Instagram. Show notes for this week's episode are available at rta.space slash 57, and you can follow me on Twitter at Garcia. Where can we follow you on Instagram? Oh, extra underscore Sophia. And Instead is that? F-I-A. There you go. We'll be back week after next, probably with our Thanksgiving special. I don't know. Depends how early this gets out or not. It might come out tomorrow. It might come out the day after that. It might come out next week. Who knows? Do y'all have your Thanksgiving living room outfits yet? What? Is this a thing? Yeah, it's a thing. Oh, I yes, mean, my Thanksgiving living room outfit. I mean, yeah. Like, I wear my okay, turkey costume. No, come on. Like, whenever your family comes over for Thanksgiving or you go to someone's house for Thanksgiving, you have an outfit you wear. Usually these corduroy pants and then exactly. a long sleeve. Uh-huh. Even though I regret the long sleeve every year because I just want, I want to get that turkey. Well, we'll be back week after next, probably with the Thanksgiving special, like I said. But until then, this, this rocket, rocket has, has landed. landed. Oh, wait, hold on. <laughs> Sorry, a motorcycle and a duck just passed by. (laughs) (laughs) A duck on a motorcycle just passed by. I mean, you know, these things happen. Yeah. You know, I mean, we're we're, we're not in a closet anymore, so who knows what can happen. (laughs) Who knows what can happen now? You know, next week there's going to be a bear and a cheetah walking by yelling, pet cheetah, cheetah, pet. Okay. Okay. Wait, I thought that was a plant. Pet cheetah. Isn't that a plant? It's a, I know, I know. I, chia pet. See, when I heard that song, I was like. Chia pet, chia pet. No, 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 but pet cheetah is a different thing, right? Yeah. It's a cheetah who's your pet. Oh. But then there's a chia pet. See, when I heard that, it was like 1 a.m. and I was listening to you trench. It's like, pet chia, pet chia. See, I was, I, was, I was thinking of chia pet instead of pet cheetah. I always get mixed out. Oh. So sometimes I do that with my hand. I'm like, I'm moving my hand. See, I look at crossing guards. And they're going like this with their hand. I mean, you can't see it, but they're like going in a circle in one direction. And I'm like, if I had not seen them start moving their hand in that direction, maybe their hand is actually going in the other direction. How do I know they're telling me go this way? Maybe that circle could mean going the other way. No, because look at your fingers. They're pointed in the way you're going. Plus, your eyes... Your eyes follow what your hands do, and so if yeah, your eyes are Yeah, okay, no one can way, see anything we're doing right now. This is why we need to be back in the closet. Well, because I'm, 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 I'm just wiggling my feet. <laughs> so, <laughs> wiggling my toes around. No, my Who toes cares? can't move. My toes can't move. Right, okay. So, um, yeah, three, two, one.